Hey guys, welcome to what's new in Reaper 5.11. This is another big update. Let's go through the change log. I've highlighted a few things over here that are worth noting, but there, this is only maybe a third of what's actually in this update. Batch converter, fix support for uh, audio units, and MIDI in effects chains, and um, MIDI to audio conversion in the effects chain. You may not have even known that there was a batch converter. It's in the file menu. And you can grab selected items like these two, add selected media items, you can add them in there, you can drag them in from another, uh, from Finder or Explorer window. But anyways, the new feature is that you can use effects chains and uh, effects chains that include audio unit plugins and plugins that convert MIDI to audio. Pretty neat. Effects put effects in a temporary offline mode when loading projects in recovery mode and do not require manual online of all plugins before saving. So this is basically like if you take this file here, click, uh, I'm going to open it in a new tab and open in recovery mode. What this will do is turn off all effects. Before this update, the effects would be set to offline as you can see here. This is still true, except if I save and close and open the project again, these plugins will be back to their original state. So it's a temporary offline rather than um, committing that change to the project file, you have to go and manually re-enable every single plugin in your project. That's kind of a pain. Recovery mode isn't an option that you need all the time, uh, but it's nice that they did that one little change that speeds everything up. There are a lot of changes to plugin support in this version. Nothing I can really show you or demonstrate, uh, but basically Waves plugins are not going to have the, um, the stretched interface or controls offset from where they should be. And there are various other little fixes that they've done to audio units and VST3 plugins so that uh, they're just more compatible with everything. If you are having problems with the plugin still, let the developers know on the forum and you know they'll try to fix it. All right, moving on to the next part, MIDI editor. There's actions for grid divisions, preserving grid type. So let me open up some MIDI here. As you can see here, I've got a toolbar set up for grid divisions, 16th, 8th. Here we've got this, this option has always been here, but I set this to quarter, my, my um, toolbar button will update. And if I set this to triplet, it will switch to the triplet thing. It's just a lot more consistent in that way. Oh yeah, and then more actions. So um, type in grid. Some of the actions here are new. In the Media Explorer, there's a context menu item to remove selected files from a database. All right, so let's open up the Media Explorer and close this. All right, so I'm looking at a database here. Um, I can grab this file, right click, and remove item from the database. That's one thing that's new there. Let's resize this so I can see both at the same time. Custom editable database tag. This is my uh, sound effects database. There's this new custom tag option. So let's see, uh, that's a photocopier. So I could put in a, a tag like uh, a printer, office. And now those things will be uh, searchable. And with this here, you can double click. And it doesn't commit the these tags to the file like uh, the BWF data, metadata. This is just for internal Reaper use, but it is searchable. Also in the Media Explorer, there's apply tempo match and pitch settings when dragging multiple files to the project bay or the arrange view. All right, so I'm gonna show you this in the arrange view. I'm gonna grab this file and this file, I'm going to apply some pitch change to it. Let's bring it up by six. Tempo matches on. So these files are 92 beats per minute. This song is 83. I'm going to 
They're both highlighted. You're going to drag them both in separate tracks. And I'll zoom in here. And you can see this is plus six pitch and a rate of 1.2. And this one is also stretched and has the pitch change as well. So now these will both loop perfectly and be in sync with the project. So the difference there compared to the last version is that only the first selected item would have those changes applied to them. One more thing with databases. So this is a database here, unnamed database, and I go to my sample library. This is not a database. Let's grab the footsteps. I can drag this onto the unnamed database, and now I've got all the footsteps uh, samples added there. I can grab a, uh, let's take this one, this individual file, and drag that on, and that's in here as well. OK, now the new feature subprojects. You can now create a project that lives inside of another project. Double click it, it opens up in a new tab. You can play them both in sync. You can, uh, well, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it. And it's most helpful for when you have really big projects like uh, a few hundred tracks. You can consolidate stuff down to smaller stems. It's a lot like freezing, only it's even more non-destructive because you get everything back in a separate project. Really great feature. I'll show you that now. All right, so I don't need those files. I'll go back to the start of this project. I've got all these vocal tracks here. Let me put them in a folder real quick. And I can grab this one, name it vocals, right click, and um, move tracks to new sub project. Uh, before I do this, I should mention that if you've ever done any changes to your default menus, you might need to reset them or look for the uh, things that have changed because this menu here has changed and also the right click menu for items has changed. Uh, something to keep in mind, if you're missing that feature, it's because it's new and you have a custom menu uh, where that does not include that. So uh, right click on the folder track or any track and move tracks to new sub project. It's warning me that there are sends on this track and the routing will be removed. Uh, that's fine. That's telling me that there's uh, reverb sends on the lead vocal and the harmony vocal. Not a problem for this. I'm gonna click OK. All right, so uh, what happened there was a new project was started. All that audio was imported into it with all the same plugin settings, automation, everything. Uh, it was then saved and rendered as a new file. Uh, we're seeing nothing here because those tracks were muted, um, but those other those four vocal tracks are now gone from this session. Uh, the project is still in a tab here. So I've got these original files. I can you know, unmute those, save again. It's going to render those faster than real time, as fast as it can. And now if I switch back to the original project, it's already updated. That is amazing. Um, this is better than freezing by far. All right, so I've showed you projects within projects. I've showed you uh, moving tracks to a project. Um, if I've closed this and I want to bring that project back up, I just double click on this project. And notice the, the item name is actually vocals.rpp. This is a project file uh, inside of Reaper as an item. Double click it, project opens in a new tab. Uh, when I hit save or close the project, it will update the master project, the original project that these files came from. All right, I'm going to close that. Let's take this item here and turn it into a subproject as well. Uh, I'm just going to add in a random effect so that we know that something has changed. Here, read delay. Doesn't matter. We'll right click, and there's this option move items to new subproject. Remember to update your, your menu, reset it to default if uh, you're not seeing this render to new subproject option because that is new.
So I'm going to click that. All right, so that's replaced with a render of that item, that project. And in fact, I can add more items to this. Let's add this in. And uh, let's put it at the beginning. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to loop the item. And I'm going to close this project and save yes. And now this tambourine track has this drum loop added as well. Now, if you wanted to record into this project and keep it in sync with your backing track, your, what's happening in the main project, uh, right click on the tab and you're looking for uh, synchronize any parent projects on playback, run background projects. Uh, there's a few different options here depending on what you wanna do. I'm not gonna show that right now. This video is already getting quite long. Render item as a new take. They added this new option, which improves the handling of MIDI and channel counts with take effects. And they renamed this option, the original option, render item as a new take, preserving source type. And in the render window, there's a new option here to render with a tail. So you can make a time selection and then add in an extra 1,000 milliseconds. This is probably more suitable for selecting, uh, exporting selected MIDI items. So, I don't know, I'll just take this section here, this selected media item, add in a thousand milliseconds at the end of that item, um, use the item wildcard, and render it. And it's this time selection plus a thousand milliseconds. Allow control of full project render area with markers named equals start and equals end. I started using this uh, during the betas, and I actually really like this option. Instead of making a time selection for rendering a whole project, something like that, um, you can use these um, flags here in your markers to, to define how large your entire project is. Um, this is great for when you have things, you know, temporary items over here, stuff that you're working on that's not part of the actual song. If you rendered the entire project, you would end up with a, this is a 14.9 minute long song. Let's add in the actual end marker here. Uh, so equals capital, all caps, E-N-D, and OK. And if we look at this, the length changed to uh, 3 minutes, 27 seconds. If we move this, it will update. Now it's two minutes and nine. The other thing I can do with this is render in markers within the exported item uh, to show the start and end. So if I add in a slash on this here and slash in this here, export it with uh, markers only, that will add in these uh, start and end flags on the actual item. Okay, so I'm going to show you some things um, that I've changed with videos, um, video editing. So there's this new add image overlay preset. And uh, what that means is that you can have transparent images on top of your videos now, uh, which is great. So I'm going to grab this one here, blue circle with a black outline. I'm going to grab that and drop it in. And here's what happens just with no uh, image processor on it. It replaces my video with this image. I'm going to add in the video processor, which I have in this folder, and choose the image overlay preset. And there we go. It's on top. And uh, if we turn this off, that's the original. This is the new option. And this is fantastic. This is something that I've wanted for a long time. I kind of got used to not having this option. This does seem to only work with files that are transparent. Uh, this is a GIF that has white background and um, clearly is not working the same way. So just something to keep in mind. Keep your image assets as PNG with alpha layer and you should be good. 
There is LCF render support, which is um, LCF format is for the LiceCap program. Uh, this is a screen capture program that Kakos has come up with. It is something that I use on the blog for little animations. I mostly use it for bug reporting on the forum. Uh, but this program can record in either GIF or uh, LCF format. And now Reaper can read and export LCF format. Improved video processor for uh, to allow color space override alpha channel use in RGBA. And that's kind of, that goes along with the image preset or image overlay preset that I showed you. Now we can have transparent layers, which is really, really nice. Okay, guys, so that's the highlights of what's new in Reaper 5.11. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and visit reaperblog.net for more tutorials.